Hey, this is Trevor Sternad from the Black Dahlia Murder here, and you're listening to the Ever Black Podcast. Hey, human scum, this is odorous from Quark. We're going to the Battle Fear Factory. This is George Quark, Commander Fisher. This is Jasper Delacroix. This is Wade from Our Lost Enemy. This is Mike Nick from Cool Fellow Tim Fee. He is at Wednesday 13. This is Bruce Anthony Rex from Kill Devil Hill. This is Gary Blue from Simple Tour, and you're listening to Ever Black Podcast. Before we go into this episode of the Ever Black Podcast, we just need to give a shout out to our show supporters, the Occult Clothing Brand Electric, which will have amazing apparel from shirts to hoodies to hats to beanies, dresses and more. Check out their full range at electricwitch.com.au and put in the code EVERBLACK for 20% off your order. Also, don't forget to subscribe, rate and review the Ever Black Podcast on Spotify and iTunes podcast streams and see all our video interviews on the Ever Black YouTube channel. You can also also read all our articles and reviews at everblack.com.au all right on with the show uh simone uh, my name's nev uh we spoke a a little while ago but it's great to actually talk to you again i mean well this time i can actually see you back then we didn't have all this technology so uh yeah it's good to uh to catch up with you mate how's everything going over there great uh we ha- are homeschooling, doing interviews, uh, doing household, fixing broken machines, all at the same time. Juggling a lot of stuff. That I mean, that ho- homeschooling is is. Pre- I I tried doing it earlier last year when it really hit us here, and uh, I struggled. I don't know how you, how everyone does it. Really, it's hardcore. Yeah. Well, my husband, he's a music teacher, so he's has more the ability to teach than I do and um, and more patience and it's a little bit stricter. I am the silly fun parent that is not so very strict (laughs) and I lose my patience faster because this I also try to do household at the same time and uh, the problem is I um, planned all the interviews uh, in the morning where normally my son would be at school, but now he's at home and it's, I have to change that for next week because uh, it's, it's difficult to tackle everything and I'm easily distracted. So. Well, I definitely appreciate you taking the time to hang out. I know it's probably all full on and crazy over there. And, uh, you know, I, I, I know as a parent myself, last time we spoke, we, I, I I'd just become a, a, a new dad and, and everything like that. It has been a little while. So, of course, the new Epica album, Omega, is out on February 26. And what a great yeah. way to kick off 2021, mate. Oh, look, hey, who we got? Yeah, he doesn't like to be picked up, but he's making noises in the background. That You know, it's not me. It's him here. That, <laughs> that thing, did, where, did you get that from some jungle? Yeah, he's no, he's from outer space. He's oh, a weird okay. cat, but he's not ours, but he lives here anyway. He's you can, from our neighbor. <laughs> you could ride that thing into battle. It's you. Uh, yeah, he could He could probably uh, carry a sled or something. He's <laughs> a, big, it's a big guy. But yeah, he's I, acting weird today. I don't know. I think everybody's getting a little bit the heebie-jeebies from the oh, corona. Man. It is. It's, yeah, I really feel for, for everyone over there that's, you know, in lockdown and is it really is it you can't leave the house sort of thing at the moment yeah only for of course we're allowed to go outside into the forest but only to supermarkets pharmacy okay the cat just left <laughs> he opened the door for himself yeah that's it wow. everything else is closed no gyms no schools a lot of people are working from home so yeah but wow. We still have enough food and a roof above our head, and it's nice and warm. I can make myself a tea, so I'm I'm good. That is good, and you know my heart does go out to everyone that's you know struggling with that at the moment. You know, we, we're pretty. Yeah, lucky. it can always be worse, so I always like to try to rele- rele- elevate. No, to how do you say downsize my problems if you compare it to many other things. Yeah, it's still, <laughs> yeah, I know, but you still, you know, you, you still have feelings and stuff and, and a life <laughs> and, you know, you're trying to yes. stay positive. I totally understand. But, uh, you know, this, you know, I'm going to say, as, as I was saying before, before, uh, battle cat came in <laughs> to the picture, uh, yeah, uh, 
Yeah, He Man's going to ride him in. Uh, you know, anyway. Um, I got to say, like the new new album is is phenomenal. Like it's such a great way to kick off the year. And uh, it, it, does it signify, you know, like a, a new beginning for the band, a new era, you know, or, or maybe a, a closing of a chapter? Because it it seems like uh, something new, something fresh has happened in there. Uh, it's a little bit of both. Of course, each record is kind of a new, uh, new start, a fresh start. And with each record, we also try to reinvent ourselves or improve ourselves wherever possible. But on this particular record, the Kingdom of Heaven trilogy, our longest songs, uh, is coming to an end. And um, but musically, lyrically, we do we did try to especially musically have a different approach go more back to basics meet up together uh, after a lovely refreshing sabbatical we um, traveled from four different countries to go back to the netherlands where Abigail was born and rent, rented a, a farmhouse to do like an intense writing camp together with our producer to get the songs more be be more coherent be more open for vocals so have the vocal line writing started at a earlier demo stage and not totally at the end and just having a great time together being creative having an immediate exchange of musical ideas where in the past it was a lot of times digitally because i live in germany mark lives in sicily Mm. He's lives in Belgium and the other guys live in the Netherlands. So in between our extensive touring schedule, there was no time nor energy nor motivation to travel even more to do that. So we all have our home studios, but we packed them in the back, traveled to the Netherlands and uh, Joost was there as well. And we set up, we had seven home studios in that house. There was music coming out of the kitchen, out of many bedrooms, out of the living room where Joost was located. And that's where we kind of finalized the writing process for Omega. That's awesome. Was it, how was it hanging out with everybody? I mean, you know, I know you all see each other every day, probably in a, in a bus, you're all crammed in together touring, but you know, <laughs> when writing and, you know, going back to sort of, you know, a, a you know, way of doing, doing things, jamming and stuff like that. How was that? Was that, was that fun and getting together in a different sort of way? Yeah, definitely refreshing. I mean, um, in the past, you know, we would get an email and we would just think, okay, I'll have a listen to it in the evening. But now it was no excuses. And um, it was nice to see that, you know, whenever I would come up with a vocal line, then Joost or one of the other guys would say, no, we have to, okay, we have to change this and that in the music because that's what fits her voice best. That's her, like my power range. I have a quite... I have a wide range. I can sing really low to really high, but there's always this comfort range where you can really shine and have a lot of power in the voice. And we wanted to exploit that, of course. And uh, therefore we had to change the music here and there a little bit in order for my vocals to, you know, for me to give the best performance possible and to also leave a little bit more space for vocal lines, because in the past we would write the songs they would be almost completely finished and it's like a hundred layers of musical melodies and then on top try to find a vocal line and i am not a computer that you can program like midi style (laughs) so um yeah that was definitely a a great process when uh when we are doing the demo recordings we also start already to write lyrics but we think about the topic each song uh We want to give and Mark and I both split up the lyrics and he writes the lyrics for the songs he composed musically, but all the other four guys also write songs. And then we just try to come up with like working lyrics while we create the vocal melodies because just singing la 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 doesn't carry the melody. Yeah. You know, you have to already start thinking about putting it into words makes it makes more sense and it just flows better. Um, yeah, it, I loved the experience. It was fun to not have any obligations. Like we have to go on tour, we have to do this or that. We have to go on stage tonight, because in the past with the holographic principle, we were even having writing sessions with Yoast 
vocal writing sessions before and after our sound check on tour. He came oh. on tour with us to write on the album. That's cool. Huh? And that was just, it was a lot. And this time we just said, we cleared our calendars. We didn't accept any offers for shows, unfortunately. But yeah, in the end, those wouldn't have, wouldn't have taken place anyway. Mm. But we really wanted to stay focused. Just this record and everything else just has to wait. Do you know what? Like, I think the end result is, it, I, I really, really like this album a lot. I mean, I love, uh, was it Skeleton Key? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I like that oh, one too. It's good, eh? It's real good. Mm-hmm. Like, so many good, it's just a really good way to kick off 2021, I think. You know, we we need that positivity. We need the the good vibes. And I think you guys are we definitely. We need the, the drive. We need the metal in our lives. <laughs> That's right. No, we definitely do. Um, was it, was there many songs left over this time? Like you had, um, you know, with like, you did like the solar system EP. Is there any, you um, know, was there, because obviously being all together, was there anything that sort of got left? This, this time we wanted to go not necessarily like quality instead of quantity. I mean, with the holographic principle, we had so many songs. And it was a mistake that we did. Uh, we just put more stress on ourselves because we had so many songs to work on. And that's something we learned from with the Oliver Principle. And we said, okay, now we're just going to pick out 12 songs, uh, which we all feel good about. And we are going to dedicate our time and energy into getting the best possible results out of those songs. And also our recording schedule was timed quite yeah, tightly, I would say. Mm. Um, and adding more songs just elongates the whole recording process. It's, of course, in the end, more money. Uh, not that we wanted to save money, that we did it because of those reasons, but just because it was the heap of work was insane with the holograph principle. So we wanted to uh, like get it into the absolute max, like 12 songs felt like a good a uh, good number for us. I mean, 12 songs doesn't mean the album is 30 minutes long. With Epica, we have <laughs> long songs. So, yeah, we can do a festival show with just three songs. We just play the three Kingdom of Heavens and then we have 45 minutes. But, uh, yeah, and a thing we did as well is to record a acoustic CD. We picked a couple of songs from Omega and we completely changed them in a very fun and new acoustic version. Oh, cool. I've got to say, uh, every time you guys release an album, it seems I find myself going down some weird rabbit hole <laughs> with the lyrics and the concepts. You put a lot into it. I, I don't know where you guys come up with it. Do you, do you all sit around and sort of talk about the universe and philosophy and, and things like that. Where, where does this come from for the concepts? It's not just like, you know, your usual sort of power metal or anything like that. It's yeah, the, very well the album title and sometimes the concept or the red line comes from Mark. And he uh, is a very spiritual guy who has many different interests. He started um in the beginning of epica he wrote the majority of the lyrics and then i jumped in and i became more experienced and we now since many records we're up to like 50 50 he writes half of the lyrics i read half of the lyrics he has a clear vision of what he wants the songs to be about and i like to freestyle a little bit within his uh topics or concepts um this is not an official concept album they only concept album that we so far released was The Divine Conspiracy. But the biggest uh, message on this record is that we're all basically existing out of light and dark. We have, you know, the yin yang symbol. We have the good and the bad side within ourselves that we on a daily basis struggle with, try to keep those in balance, try to be aligned and um, that we're all kind of stuck in this, that we all have this inner labyrinth in which we try to navigate uh, through the course of our life and try to find out what is the meaning of life. And I guess we're now in this 
not midlife crisis <laughs> age. <laughs> I'm I'm getting there. I'm 36 now, but uh, Marcus is a couple years older than me. But I guess we do. We've reached a very profound level, like lyric lyrically. Yeah. It's a very emotional album. It's definitely going to vibrate with a lot of people. I think it was written before the pandemic hit, but it can. It's very applicable to what's happening now. Also, like current topics like the global warming crisis. Um, genome editing that scientists are working on creating superhumans you know those recent topics are also present on the album as well but it's uh yeah it's definitely a very mature album musically and lyrically i I agree do you find that you know when you're working through those lyrical concepts and you're doing your own research and you're discussing those things that it sort of helps you in a lot of ways and have you have you has it helped you on your own spiritual journey you know, yeah, it is, that it's like, it's, sorry for interrupting. <laughs> no, 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 that's all right. It's a little bit like therapy, I guess. Some people have diaries in which they write their thoughts and we have our thoughts carried by melodies and, you know, the messages spread all around the world. And um, Music has always been my lifestyle. It's my DNA. But the last couple of years, it also has been like therapy for me as well. Mm. Listening to our own Epica songs, of course, but other great bands as well. But then the writing of the lyrics for the upcoming album has been a great way to channel everything that's going on in your personal life, that's going on in the world. And I just love playing with metaphors. I love the songwriting process of creating beautiful sentences and learning the English language even more. One of my favorite websites is Thesaurus. So you can (laughs) uh, really broaden your vocabulary, expand your vocabulary. Uh, In the beginning of Epica, the books that I was reading were dictionaries. I was just expanding my vocabulary and writing down beautiful words. I guess in the beginning of Epica, some of my lyrics didn't make any sense because I maybe exaggerated the use of expensive words. Uh, but we work also together with a lyric, how do you say, lyric coach, lyric, uh, um, well, native speaking, uh, English native speaking artists. Uh, for this album, we've been uh, working together with the singer of Mark's second band, Mayan. Uh, his name is Adam and he's American. He's a mathemat- uh, mathematics teacher, but also a yeah. metalhead. And we had a couple of uh, nightly sessions where I was, you know, I send him the lyrics. He picks out the big mistakes and he gives me options to choose from as well. So um, yeah, it's every time we write a new album, our English is getting better as well. You know what? But you, you, your English is uh, perfect. You, I mean, you know, yeah, like, perfect, boring. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> no, I'm like, it is, uh, it's, it's getting there. But I guess my my advantage as a Dutchy, original Dutchy, living yeah. in Germany, is that phonetically, I have things in order. The Germans over here, there, we call it Denglish, which is a mixture of Deutsch, German, the D, and English, <laughs> Denglish, because they have such a strong accent and they have everything subbed or dubbed uh, in uh, movies. Yeah, Going to the cinemas here is a traumatic experience for me as a movie lover. And I prefer not to, if I have to uh, go to the cinema. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, my husband, he loves to read books and he's also touring musicians, but sometimes he gets the, the <clears throat> he totally rapes the words like, because the Germans don't know how to pronounce it. You can read as many books as you want, but you don't have the practice and you don't hear other people speak the language. And I'm a very, I'm a more like an auditive learner. So. You don't want to learn from from Australian though. We butcher every, I mean, we just sound like a backwards record down here. So don't pay. I like the Australian accent (laughs) a lot. And also the Irish I prefer Irish, British, Australian more than the American. But every every 
every different slang of the English language is, is nice. It has its cute characteristics, I guess. It's true. Yeah. We just draw everything out. Yeah. <laughs> but if, uh, of course, uh, your best mate, Elise Ride, is one of my favorite uh, people on the planet. She's, uh, she's awesome. And, uh, you know, I've always wondered, would you guys ever come together and, and maybe make an album together? Is that something you've discussed? Maybe. Uh, I guess we, we now both have a new record with our own bands. And yeah. uh, I talk, talked to her about it a couple of times that it would be a fun thing to do. To do. <laughs> now I start uh, switching to Australian as well, mate. Um, <laughs> now we have the time. So we are definitely planning on getting together soon, as uh, soon as it's allowed to travel again. And maybe who knows it would be a great thing uh, i think our voices match together really well that would be awesome and, uh, yeah we would be like the modern day metal version of ava i guess mate Bre hey bring it on do you know what would be awesome when everything goes back to normal i'm knocking on everything wood here yes both the new normal you, i guess both of you guys teaming up both bands for an australian tour would be probably one of the best that things be. that ever happened that would be Great, yeah. Definitely uh, the long flight won't be as boring if I have Elise with me. <laughs> See? I, hey, I'm pu just putting it out there. i got no influence. But hey, just putting it out there, just in case. Yeah, that's good. I'll keep it in mind. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, uh, of course, uh, you're probably missing touring a lot at the moment, um, which I understand. But is it something that you're you're planning at the moment? Can you plan... Any shows or anything over there like, to support the album? Uh, well, we had to unfortunately postpone a European tour with Apocalyptic and Wheel two times already. And we have yes. some festivals scheduled for the summer. But fingers crossed that they can happen. I'm a little bit skeptical about it. I mean, in Germany, we started with the vac vaccines. Um, I don't know when I'm going to be getting the bill gates chip <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. a fun hole. <laughs> that's <Okay>. yeah <laughs> uh then we'll all start sounding like computers after that no i i am not a conspiracy <laughs> thinker i will get the vaccine because in my profession it's also obligatory i mean i need to get it otherwise i can't probably can't step on an airplane or be on stage and i'm always around a lot a large group of people mm. And each country is different, but now we're currently in the winter and it will probably stretch all the way through spring. Fingers crossed. We all are eager to get back on stage and I guess we're losing our patience a little bit, but yeah. we have to keep on going and um, how do you say, try to stay sane and hope for a better future on stage. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, we definitely hope to see you guys down here again soon. I mean, yeah, me too. It was man. fun. The two times we were in Australia was good times. Yeah, yeah, it was phenomenal. And uh, well, I definitely appreciate you hanging out on the show tonight. The new Epica album Omega is out on February twenty six, and uh, we'll have all the links down here as I always say. Uh, so, mate, thanks so much for hanging. And uh, look, stay safe. To you and, and your family and uh we'll we'll have the beer well i haven't got a beer now but we'll keep them cold for you okay thank you very much thanks for having me